This week on EM and 5, we're going to talk about the different steps you take in preparing for an intubation. Now, there's a lot of different steps to an RSI, and one of the most important things in preparation is the assembly of your equipment, your backup airways, medications, so that when it's finally time to actually intubate the patient, you're prepared for anything. But this is a lot of different stuff to remember, and it can be a little tricky. So one mnemonic you can use that'll help you remember the things that you need for intubation is soap me. And this is what it stands for, suction, oxygen, airway, positioning, medications, and equipment and untitled CO2. Okay, so EMS calls and says there's a patient on the way with respiratory distress. Let's get prepared for our airway. So the first thing we're going to set up is the suction, and this includes the Yankauer as well as the suction canister. And make sure you turn up the vacuum all the way and make sure that you kind of test it to see that you have a good seal. Next, for oxygenation, and this is going to include mostly the pre-oxygenation, so this should include a non-rebreather mask, as well as a bag valve mask. And also make sure you don't forget the nasal cannula. This you can use for apneic oxygenation, and you're gonna make sure and turn up the oxygen all the way up to 15 liters. Now there's a lot of equipment that we need to assemble for our airway step. So a lot of people have a checklist that they like to go through. In this case, they put together a checklist that's actually a sheet and you can assemble your airway right on top of the checklist, which is pretty neat. And at many places that have a resuscitation room or an airway kit, they'll have all the airway things actually laid out ahead of time so that when it's time to intubate the patient, you don't really have to think anything through. But let's go through the different equipment that you'd like to assemble for your airway. Now for your blades, one thing to make sure you do is check and make sure that the lights are working. So check each one. And I usually like to assemble a couple different ones. Usually you have more than one size. So here we have a Mac 3 and 4. And you should probably have a Miller on hand as well. For each endotracheal tube, make sure that you load a stylet. And you also want to check each tube for leaks in the cuff. Now usually I'll assemble a couple different tubes of different sizes. If you're planning on using a glide scope, you'll need the special stylet that comes with a glide scope. It has a slightly different hook at the end than a regular stylet. Make sure you check all the cuffs on your tubes. I also like to assemble a couple different sizes of oral airway, as well as nasopharyngeal airway as a backup. Now I like to have a lot of different airway backups, so we're going to add a bougie. I make sure you have a crite kit nearby or at least a scalpel that's handy. If it's available, I always like to have a glide scope. Make sure that the light's working and that you plug it in ahead of time so it has enough time to heat up and prevent fogging on the tip of the camera. You can also assemble other devices such as LMAs. Okay, we have all our equipment assembled. The blades, the tubes, we've had them preloaded with stylets and checked the cups. And we have a bunch of different backups including oral airway, nasopharyngeal airway, LMAs, and a bougie. Next up is positioning. Now our goal with positioning is to align the oral axis with the pharyngeal or tracheal axis, and that allows you to have the best look right down to the cords when it's time for intubation. The best way to achieve this is something called the sniffing position. So we're gonna have an anterior displacement of the head and then tilted slightly upward. Our goal is to have the ear be parallel with the sternal notch. And you might have to play around a little bit with different levels of pillows or supports. This is something to prepare ahead of time because some patients might require an entire ramp of pillows and sheets in order to get them in the crack position, whereas others might only require one towel roll under the shoulder. Next, we're gonna assemble all of our medications and pull up all the correct dosing ahead of time so you don't have to think about it when you're intubating. This is gonna include any pretreatment that you think is necessary, choose what type of sedation you're gonna do, and also choose a paralytic. Last up, we're just going to get the rest of the equipment that we're going to need. Make sure your monitor is turned on and that your patient's hooked up. If you have a respiratory therapist available, make sure you call them and get the vent set up ahead of time. The last part is making sure that you have your end tidal CO2, both the colorometer and also the actual wave monitor that you're going to hook up once the patient's intubated. Okay, we've gone through the soap mean mnemonic, and we have all of our equipment and our medications, everything we need ready for intubation. Now it's time for the RSI. Here's some references, and thanks for joining us on EM in 5.